In its nearly 40-year history, the Transformers franchise has crossed over with many other properties, but none more often than its fellow Hasbro series, G.I. Joe. The robots in disguise and the real American heroes have met in animation, comic books, toys and more, and with Snake Eyes G.I. Joe Origins hitting cinemas, there's no better time to look at the basics. G.I. Joe was the world's first action figure, released by Hasbro in 1964. Designed by inventor Stan Weston to be the boy's answer to famous fashion doll Barbie, and named after a World War II slang term for US soldiers, the original Joe was a highly poseable 12-inch tall figure, supplemented with a wide array of accessories, costumes and vehicles from four branches of the military that allowed kids to play soldier like never before. The toy was a big hit, but as the 60s went on, the American public's growing disapproval of the armed forces as a result of the Vietnam War prompted Hasbro to steer G.I. Joe away from its military theme. In the 1970s, Joe was rebranded as a world-travelling adventurer who fought fantastic threats like the alien Intruders, alongside his adventure team, including super-powered allies Bullet Man and the Atomic Man. This era saw the introduction of iconic features like lifelike hair, movable eagle eyes, and flexible kung fu grip hands. Joe was also licensed to other companies in international markets who developed their own takes on the figure. In the United Kingdom, Palatoy sold Joe under the name Action Man, and in Japan, Takara reinvented him as the robotic superhero Henshin Cyborg, who would in turn inspire several successive series of robot and mecha toys that years later Hasbro would license to create the Transformers toy line. Check out the basics on the invention of the Transformers for the full story. The original 12-inch G.I. Joe series came to an end in 1976, but in the 1980s, with patriotism on the rise again in the era of Ronald Reagan and the Cold War, Hasbro decided to reboot the line in the popular new 3 and 3 quarter inch scale, reimagining G.I. Joe not as a single soldier, but as the name of a team a highly trained special mission force whose purpose was to stop the ruthless terrorist organization COBRA from conquering the world. Launched in 1982 and subtitled A Real American Hero, this new series was co-developed with Marvel Comics. Writer Larry Hama, drawing on his own experiences as a US soldier in Vietnam, invented names and personalities for the toys, and wrote a monthly G.I. Joe comic book, while Marvel's media arm Marvel Productions co-produced an animated TV series. The formula was a huge success, with G.I. Joe quickly becoming the king of the toy aisle once more, and Hasbro repeated the process a few years later, teaming up with Marvel again to develop the Transformers line. By 1985, Transformers and G.I. Joe had become two of the most popular toy lines of the era, and with common ancestry already linking them, it must have seemed logical to Hasbro to have the two cross over. The cartoons in particular were noticeably similar. Being produced by the same company, they shared writers, animators, voice actors and music. They often aired side by side and a pack-in catalogue included with Family Home Entertainment's VHS releases of the two series even showed the characters interacting, working together to safely deliver videos to stores. The cartoons themselves would never feature a direct crossover, but there was some interplay between the two. Things started small in the Transformers Season 2 episode Prime Target, which referenced G.I. Joe's Soviet Union counterparts the October Guard and featured a newscaster intended to be recurring Joe-supporting character Hector Ramirez. The show's third season, set 20 years in the future, introduced Earth Defense Command Captain Marissa Fairborn, intended by writer Flint Dilly to be the daughter of G.I. Joe's Flint and Lady J. Though unnamed, a hologram of the elderly Flint even appeared in the episode The Killing Jar. Later in the season, in the cartoon's most overt crossover, the aged Cobra Commander appeared in the episode Only Human, 
under the alias of Old Snake, to sell crime lord Victor Drath Synthoid technology, a method of creating artificial humanoids previously featured in several G.I. Joe episodes. They simply don't make terrorists like they used to. Cobra! <laughs> Future stories set in the continuity of the animated series have sometimes alluded to it sharing a universe with G.I. Joe, but to date there's been no full, true cartoon team-up between the two franchises. Instead, comic books have been the medium in which the Joes and Transformers have most frequently crossed paths, which began when Marvel crossed over their Transformers and G.I. Joe comics in 1986's G.I. Joe and the Transformers miniseries. In classic comic book team-up style, this series saw G.I. Joe and the Autobots join forces after an initial misunderstanding to stop Cobra and the Decepticons from acquiring a mobile power station. The crossover wasn't initially published in the United Kingdom, where the real American hero line was being marketed under the name Action Force. Instead, a UK original team-up story was produced for the British Transformers and Action Force comics, in which Action Force battled Megatron in London. Ultimately, Action Force wasn't a big hit in the UK. The comic was cancelled in 1988 and folded into the Transformers title, running as a backup strip in that series for the remainder of its life, during which time the original crossover was finally reprinted for UK audiences. The original Transformers toy line ended after 1990, but G.I. Joe would last for a few more years, and in 1993 the two franchises would meet again in a new crossover designed to promote the relaunch of the Transformers brand as Transformers Generation 2. Published in the pages of the still ongoing G.I. Joe comic, the story served as a prologue to the upcoming Generation 2 comic and featured Megatron allying with Cobra to avail of their resources and have himself rebuilt into the form of his new Generation 2 toy. The Real American Hero toy line and comic came to an end in 1994, and in the early 2000s the comic book licenses for the two properties were picked up by different publishers. Transformers by Dreamwave Productions and Joe by Devil's Due Publishing. Each company produced their own crossover miniseries, each set in their own separate continuity. In 2003, Devil's Due released G.I. Joe vs. The Transformers, which saw Cobra enslave the Transformers and rebuild them to convert into classic Cobra vehicles, until G.I. Joe helped to free them. Three sequels to this series followed over the next four years, each weirder and wilder than the last, featuring time travel, a robotic version of G.I. Joe villain Serpentor, Unicron attacking the Earth, and more. In 2004, Dreamwave published Transformers G.I. Joe, an Elseworlds-style adventure that transplanted the characters into World War II. A sequel set in the 80s entitled Divided Front went into production, but only one issue was released before Dreamwave went out of business. In the latter half of the decade, the licenses for both franchises were acquired by IDW Publishing. IDW initially chose to keep their Transformers and Joe comics separate for years, before eventually publishing their own alternate universe crossover, 2014's Transformers vs. G.I. Joe, a subversive psychedelic series by Tom Scioli that smashed the two franchises together in a high-concept retro-style adventure. Sadly, outside of comics, G.I. Joe hasn't been able to match the success of Transformers in the 21st century. Like Transformers, the characters and concepts of a real American hero have been rebooted and reimagined multiple times, from the anime Sigma 6 in 2005, to a live-action film series in 2009, to the Renegades cartoon in 2010. But these new incarnations have never really captured the imagination of modern audiences, and none of them have crossed over with any of the various Transformers reboots either. In the early 2010s, Hasbro did have plans to use the Transformers Prime animated series as a springboard for a crossover project titled Unit E, 
which would have brought together characters from Transformers, G.I. Joe, and other Hasbro properties like Rom the Space Knight, Mask, Micronauts, Action Man, and more. But these plans fell through. Similarly, talk of a Hasbro cinematic universe of movies began in 2015, but thus far, nothing's happened with that either. But where animation and films failed, IDW's comics picked up the slack. In 2016, the company retroactively declared that their Transformers and G.I. Joe comics had actually been taking place in the same universe. And in the Revolution crossover event, the bots and the Joes joined forces with other Hasbro heroes to stop an alliance of villains from acquiring the power of Earth's Energon. This establishment of a shared universe allowed the two franchises to interact on a more permanent, ongoing basis than ever before. Marissa Fairborn and Flint were able to properly appear together as father and daughter, Skywarp left the Decepticons to join G.I. Joe, and the characters would team up again in 2017's First Strike to save Cybertron from Joe Colton, the original G.I. Joe from the classic 12-inch toy line, who had gone rogue and believed that all Transformers needed to be destroyed. With this long history of crossovers in media behind them, it took a surprising amount of time for G.I. Joe and the Transformers to meet in toy form. Hasbro did create a prototype for a potential crossover toy in the 90s, but it was never released. In the 2000s, there were toys like Snowcat from Transformers Energon and Skyhammer from Transformers Universe, who transformed into G.I. Joe-inspired vehicles, the Joe Snowcat and the Cobra Rattler. But these were more like stealth crossovers, easter eggs for fans, not advertised as such. Then on the other hand, Megatron from 2006's Titanium series included references to G.I. Joe and Cobra in the bio printed on its packaging, but the toy itself just turned into a generic tank unrelated to the Joe brand. The first true cross-branded G.I. Joe Transformers toys were released as exclusives at the San Diego Comic-Con in 2011. A non-transforming G.I. Joe Skystriker jet recolored as Starscream, with a Cobra Commander pilot figure wielding a Megatron pistol. In the years since this release, crossover toys have become a more common occurrence. Mostly exclusive to conventions and collectors clubs, they've included more Joe and Cobra vehicles recolored to look like Transformers, as well as figures inspired by the comic and cartoon crossovers of the past, from Marissa Fairborn and Old Snake, to Marvel's Generation 2, IDW's Revolution, and Tom Scioli's series. Perhaps most notable, though, was Viper, released in 2015's Combiner Wars toy line a Decepticon combat drone who transformed into a Cobra Rattler, sporting composite Decepticon Cobra symbols. Viper would even appear in Shioli's comic and in the Transformers Earth Wars mobile game in 2016, with a full-blown G.I. Joe crossover then occurring in the game in 2019, including bots that transformed into Joe and Cobra vehicles. Linked all the way back to the earliest days of their history, G.I. Joe and Transformers might be two very different franchises, but they've always gone together right from the start. Yo Joe, and roll out! And those are the basics on Transformers and G.I. Joe. What's your favourite crossover story or toy? Would you like to see that Hasbro Cinematic Universe happen? Answers in the comments. Like and subscribe for more Transformers history and lore, and get early access to new episodes by supporting the show on Patreon.